there, Kathy and Jeff back again, this time with Grade 6, Unit 9. The duration for this unit is five weeks, and there is a lot packed into this unit. In this unit, students will be exploring Earth's history, geologic time, fossils, and plate tectonics. In addition to these topics, students will learn a little bit about evolution as we explore the relationship between fossils and modern organisms. Let's take a look at the standards for this unit. Standard 6.MSESS1-4 asks students to analyze and interpret rock layers and in index fossils to determine the relative ages of rock formations that result from processes occurring over long periods of time. In this picture, you'll see the timeline of Earth's history on the right. At the bottom, note that Earth formed 4.6 billion years ago. As you move up that column, you'll see the various geologic time periods. On the left are examples of organisms that lived during that time period. The fossils of these organisms give us an idea of what life was like during that time period. For example, organisms that died during the Paleozoic era were buried under soil, mud, and sediment that was present during the Mesozoic era. These organisms became index fossils, which means the presence of these specific fossils can correlate to a specific geologic time period. For standard 6.MSESS2-3, students will analyze and interpret maps showing the distribution of fossils and rocks, continental shapes, and seafloor structures to provide evidence that the Earth's plates have moved great distances, collided, and spread apart. In this image to the right, you will see that the crust of the Earth is not one solid piece, but is broken up into irregular shapes. We call these tectonic plates. Plates actually float on the mantle and move a little bit each year due to convection currents in the mantle. This standard is saying that students should note the jigsaw type patterns in the plates and that in many cases, the exact same fossils have been found on two different continents. An example of this would be index fossils found along the west coast of Africa and the east coast of South America. 6.MS-LS4-1 Analyze and interpret evidence from the fossil record to describe organisms in their environment, extinctions, and changes to life forms throughout the history of Earth. This picture just gives you an example of how the fossil record can provide us with information on ancient organisms and how they may be related to modern organisms. 6.MS LS4-2 construct an argument using anatomical structures to support the evolutionary relationships among and between fossil organisms and modern organisms. This picture shows you an example of something we've known as homologous structures. Take a look at the arm and hand of the human on the left. You'll notice the same basic bone structure in the cat, the whale, and the bat. This indicated that these organisms have a common ancestor and have evolved over time to survive in different habitats. This unit is really about looking at how the earth and organisms living on the earth have changed over millions of years. You don't need to know or bog down in details and know the names of all the geologic time periods like Jurassic, Cenozoic, Mesozoic, but do know that changes have occurred to the surface of the Earth, the lithosphere, as well as plants, animals, and single-celled organisms that inhabit the Earth over the 4.6 billion years of Earth's history. The other big part of this unit is understanding plate tectonics and how the movement of the plates over time causes volcanoes, earthquakes, and changes to Earth's surface. Make sure to visit the topic of Pangaea during the unit. So this topic can be very difficult for students to grasp. We want you to think about changing up your planning for this unit. As you work with the 5E model, think about a way to engage your students or hook them into the unit. Then let them explore the topic using a new strategy that's found in the Discovery Education website. This new strategy is called Board Builder, and we'll show you an example of a board and then give you some instructions that your students could follow so that they could make their own board. Have the students create a board as the explorer for this unit. Students could share their boards with the class, and then you will have created background knowledge for your students. 
The next step in this unit planning would be to explain, and that is where you could provide class notes, read from the text, show videos, or plan activities to support the standards. The explain would build upon the background knowledge students created while building their boards in Discovery Ed. So I know students love to build the boards and they will also learn some important computer skills as well as build the background knowledge that you need for further exploration of these standards. So let's get started. So we're going to go to the Discovery Education website www.discoveryeducation.com you're going to log in using your username and password. Your username is your 10-digit phone number that is on file at DAB. And the password, if you've never logged in before, is the word discovery. If you have logged in and you've forgotten your password, just type in your username, 10-digit phone number, and then a prompt will appear for you that says forgot password. Then you're able to change your password. Okay, so here's an example of what exactly um, is a board. We're in the board builder feature of Discovery Ed, and you can see this is what we're talking about is my board. Here is the title of our board in a banner, what is DNA. As I scroll down through the board on this note card are the instructions for the students. Here's an example of the standard being pasted into the board on this, um, this binder clip and, and note paper. Over here, is the vocabulary for this unit. This has a uh, actual scroll down function within that box, the text box. Moving down the board is a video that was from Discovery Education. The videos just insert nicely right into the board. You can put a title underneath the video, uh, give some directions. You can add a text box explaining in this case what is DNA and adding graphics, images, and pictures. Moving down through the board, you can see here is a link to a YouTube video and this kind of catchy little um, speech bubble, I guess you'd call it. Here's a link also to the Amoeba Sisters website on YouTube, which is something that I would want the students to be exploring while they're on this board. This next box is a quiz on DNA structure and function. This was a Word document that I created, saved on my desktop, and then inserted here in the board. So what students would do is click on the download button and the quiz would download for them and they'd be able to work on that on their computer. Um, just one more graphic here with a text box and kind of a notepad sort of look to it. So this basically is what a board is. When you're using board, you, I'm going to show you in a minute how to get all these kind of catchy little graphics, the different text box features, and even how to insert a video and be able to play that video right from your board. General structure. Okay, so here we are in Discovery Education. You're going to come to the tab that says Builder Tools, click on that, and we're going to select Board Builder. The Board Builder menu opens up and you can work with a blank board or you can choose any one of these themes. We'll start here with a blank board. I'm going to call it Grade 6. Unit 9. And now it asks where I want to save it. I'm going to save it here in my content as Grade 6, Unit 9. And up comes the blank canvas for me to work at. Over here are your edit editing tools. Um, you can again select a theme if you wanted to work with, say, scrapbook instead of just a blank. We're going to stay in blank. You can add items. Here's where we can add the headline box a text box, media, which would be either pictures or video directly from Discovery Ed or from your computer, and also any attachments. An attachment is what I um, used when I built the quiz as a Word document. I uploaded it using this attachment feature. The other thing, if you take a look up here, you have a button for edit, preview, print, save, share, and assign. So just again some other buttons that we're going to look at the function of those as we build. So let's start with adding an item. We're going to add a headline, grade 6, unit 9. Now over here I can edit the size of the text by making it smaller or larger and I can add a background. This is where you get some creativity in how you're going to be able to make your individualize your board. So after the headline I might choose a text box 
when I get to text box. Again, I have some editing functions for the font, how it's formatted within the text box. I can insert a hyperlink in the text box if I wanted to link out, say, to a YouTube video, um, change the font size, and again, I can work with the background and choose any of the different backgrounds, for example, like the index card. So in this box, once I start typing in the box, it could be my first question that I want the students to research. So this could be the first um, box I want them to go and research, where I want them to maybe find some information or a video. What are fossils? How are fossils created? I might create another text box over here for students with the second question, what information can we learn from fossils? And again, if I ch ch take a look at some of the different backgrounds, uh, maybe I want to put this one on blue paper or maybe a phone. I could put the speech bubble. Here's where we have a lot of creativity in the um, formation of the text box. So what information can we learn from fossils? What are fossils? How are fossils created? The other, as we go through, these are just adding text boxes, but you can also add media. So let's say that I want to go and look for a video that might answer this question, what are fossils? I can search fossils. When the search results come up, if you take a look over here on the left, you can filter by subject, you can filter by grade. So once you start searching, for example, if I wanted to use this video, Formation of Fossils, I just hit Add, Add Select Resource, and the video is added right into my board. The other piece is adding attachments. Here's where you can upload files. Maybe it's um, directions you want, a vocabulary list, or anything. You can upload information here. Okay, so when we're in board, there might be times when you want to preview the board. I'm right now in preview mode. And you can see that we had the, um, the index cards with the question, what information can we learn from fossils up here? Now I'm looking at this video and I'm realizing that this video isn't exactly going to answer some of my questions. So come up here to the buttons, click on edit. And that will give you the editing function again where I can delete that video. Now the other thing is, let's say I want to go search for videos, but I don't want to be in board builder. I want to save my board. It's usually saving automatically. You'll notice down here in the right, automatically saving. Where is it saving to? It's saving to my content. So let's say I want to step out of the board for a little bit and I want to look for some videos about fossils. I'm going to add these videos to my content. When I'm searching for the videos, again, you have the filters that will um, allow you to be a little bit more specific. I'm going to look for grade six to eight. I just want to find some videos and now I'm going to look through these videos. I've got fossils, the importance of fossils, exploring fossils. Maybe I want this one, fossil formation. So let's take a look at this, for example. I can run over here to the right and see this full video exploring fossils is 15 minutes long. But if really, maybe I actually want this clip here, the importance of fossils. So now I select that clip. I can come up here and play the clip and decide if I really want to keep this clip. Now we've just pretend we've watched the clip. It's really awesome and I want to keep it. So the video, The Importance of Fossils, I click on the three ellipses, add to my content, and once I click add to my content, add, I can now go back up to my content scroll down and here's my video the importance of fossils um, if you tend to add a lot of videos to your my content folder you can just scroll down um, look for the date that they were created so now this video the importance of fossils is here in my content if I want to go back to my board I can click on my content because this is where my board is saved Grade 6, Unit 9, open up my board. And now I can add, right, so here I am, the board open. You notice I don't have my functions over here. I have to come up and click on Edit. 
and then I will get the tabs um, with the different functions. So now let's say that I want to add an item. I want to add media this time. And here I'm going to add the media from my content. I'm going to scroll down to that video, the importance of fossils, importance of fossils, choose, and now that specific video has been added here. So that's another way to use the Discovery Ed website to search for your videos, put them in my content, and then insert them into the board. Now what I want to challenge you to do is show this video to your students. Let them learn how to make a board. Bring them to the computer lab. Let them create a board where you put the questions up for them. Questions may be what are fossils, how are they created, what information can we learn from fossils, what are some of the different organisms that have existed throughout time? Um, what is the history of the earth? And let them find some videos, let them find some images and different media, create a board, and then using text box, they type in some of the answers to these questions. But they've also inserted some media, some videos, and some pictures. What this would do is give you the foundation or the background knowledge so that you could then go ahead and start explaining and teaching the rest of the unit using your videos, your text, um, and class notes. So again, try using the board builder feature with your students as the explore, where they get to go and learn the information about the topic, create a board, and share that back with you in the class. We hope that you like the idea of using board builder with your students. You can also check out our video for Grade 3, Unit, unit 9. This video has some great ideas for teaching fossils. You may be able to build on some of the ideas we presented in that video. So if you're interested, go to our YouTube site to find this video. And of course, the reason we're creating these videos for you is because... Science, Science matters. matters.